Hello everyone and welcome to the Almond Academy. So we are going to be making some recipe content here today. My name is Rhiannon Lambert. I am a registered nutritionist and I have a series of books, a podcast, and I do a lot of work with my clinic um, in Harley Street, although it's, of course, remote at the moment um, owed to COVID-19. So we are doing the best we can, and I hire a team of registered dietitians and nutritionists to work in a variety of areas, from eating disorders, weight management, pre- and postnatal, sports nutrition, and there's a lot of work there. But enough about me. I think we all want to know what we're going to be covering today. So today's demo it's really going to be explaining how to get nutritional information in an accessible way um, into social media content, especially, of course, creating recipe demos, um, creating reels, because we know now on the platform Instagram that reels gain a lot of traction. Um, the platform, I'm talking like I sound like I know what I'm talking about. I'm not a social media expert. I am a nutritionist, but I do know that the uh, the reels gain a lot more traction and Instagram pushes them. So you're more likely to get your reel seen. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing today. And how to reuse recipe content and get that into any blogs that you have. So I guess the essential aim of this um, webinar is to make sure that nutrition professionals can get out there, that we can deliver amazing messages, that we can get evidence-based information across at the same time as creating interesting recipe format because audience, our audiences connect with uh, food, obviously. It's what we do, but making food makes things a little bit more fun. So let's start by explaining it's important to pick the right content, and there's no doubt about it. And I've got an example here that you can see on the screen of a pancake recipe I did for Pancake Day. So I think we all know pancakes for Pancake Day. It's been done um, to death, as they say. I mean, how many varieties of pancakes can you create? So I thought, right, I need to do something different here. So instead of just creating a recipe of one, on the reel, I did two in one, um, which was a bit challenging, to be honest, to try and squeeze everything into the tiny time frame. But it did extremely well. As you can see, it had at the time 103,000 um, views on the page, and it was immensely popular. So this wouldn't have done well if the photography on the holding image wasn't good. So it's really important that you really think about the image. It's all very well saying I want to create pancakes, but if you're just going to serve up some white beige pancakes with no colour or pleasing um, aesthetic imagery with it, so we, we've gone for spinach for the green and the bright, and I knew that red, um, red and green work quite well together, and we've added some raspberries to the sweet uh, biscoff options that I've got there on the sweet pancake. So think of colour, think of making sure the recipe is balanced. I did Sweet, sweet and savory deliberately and as a nutritionist I know that I can definitely when I'm discussing this recipe tweak in oh an easy way of getting vegetables into pancake dishes which is so often seen as savory or really missing out because you can get some extra fiber in here if you add some nutrients to the options because they're not just for sweet dishes so really have a think at what other successful people are doing online and try and learn from it I think one of my um sources of inspiration, which I've only just got my head around recently, is TikTok. Um, I did naively think that it was not a platform for health professionals, but we should have a presence on every platform. That's the overall ultimate goal. And Alma and Board are very keen as well to make sure that we are all out there doing our bit. And TikTok's a really good example of looking at things that go viral. So there was a trend recently that you'll probably remember of wraps. Um, you know, how to make a wrap in four ways, very simple in one video. Healthy dessert, what's plant-based? Is it veganuary at the time you're making the recipe? Then do a plant-based recipe. Really have a think about all of that type of information to enable you to make it engaging. So think about the audience. So regardless of where you're going to post this, on Facebook, like I just mentioned, TikTok, Think about what's going to make it interesting. Um, I know, as I've just mentioned, TikTok might be or was for the younger generations, but it has a very different style to Instagram. Instagram is immensely image-led. It is an image-led platform, so you have to get that spot on. And people want a bit more now. They want an engaging caption. 
they want to hear your voice. I've even started recording and experimenting with putting my voice over a recipe reel, which is another feature I'll discuss later on in this webinar for you all. But really think about what they want from it. I know that if I'm posting something on Facebook, perhaps it doesn't need to be as visually led. It's really about um, emotively connecting a bit more and getting them um, something going, like a movement going. So think about the take home messages. Before I, I give a talk or a demonstration, almost like today, delivering this talk to you all, I think, right, what do I want everyone to go away feeling? Like today, I want you all to feel inspired and motivated that you can do this. I want you to think about remembering that you need to make it colorful. It needs to be appealing just as much as interesting and engaging. So I would memorize, if I'm giving a talk, um, three to five facts. Uh, in the top of my head, if I'm doing a talk about almonds, I'm talking about their, the study they conducted on wrinkles, I try and think, right, so they measured it using this photograph system and they discovered that it was the depth and severity of the wrinkle that was measured. And I, I try and think in my head what key points I really want to be taken home there. And I've got a nice example that I will be showing you and um, that you can access of a very spontaneous Instagram live video um, using almonds that I made for you all to have a look at. Um, I tried to keep it casual, I opened with an icebreaker, <laughs> quite literally, um, something that I think can calm you down because if you're the sort of person that can get a bit nervous, um, it's a really nice way to ease you into giving any sort of demonstration is to say, how are you? How are you guys feeling today? Um, I might give something away about myself or, oh, I'm a bit tired, but I'm so excited to be doing this. You know, this has really got me through the day. I've been really looking forward to sharing this information with you and hopefully seeing you all create what I'm about to make for you later on today. So really have a think about it and what is relevant. I guess at the current time, this is just thinking on the top of my head, um, I would say, well, the news today has said in the UK we're easing lockdown restrictions. So perhaps I would try and slip that in and make it nutritionally related and say, what eatery are you most looking forward to? You know, we know there's tons of research on the Mediterranean diet, so maybe you want to go out there and, you know, check out your local Mediterranean restaurant that's just opened up, show a bit of support and just interweave the nutritional facts in a colloquial manner and landing those messages in a really smooth way. So the example video that I've recorded for you, I was briefed by the Almond Board of what key points they wanted in it. Almonds contain healthy fats and fiber. So as long as I'm slipping that in at a natural point when I'm delivering a, a recipe, uh, that's going to work really nicely. It's interesting and I can talk about the fact that we're not getting enough fiber. I know on the top of my head that in the UK, we're not reaching the 30 grams a day goal. I know that as health professionals, you all know your stuff. So it's a real opportunity to have the briefing message and to expand on it in quite an interesting way. If it's live, take questions from the audience. Hey, do you guys get enough fiber? Did you know this? And then the reply as you go along and you can get this kind of engaging dialogue going on uh, throughout the entire um, recipe demo. And then, yes, the example I used before, the wrinkle severity, the skin pigment of the study that we looked at, looking at aging on the skin and looking at wrinkles in postmenopausal women. That's a really interesting study. And it's one that I think we can all relate to. And straight away, it becomes more engaging because everybody wants to check out what they can do to help their skin, right? If you think about um, you know, skincare products, you could say, oh, I bet you're spending a fortune on your skincare products right now. Um, you know, well, actually, if you just eat a handful of almonds, this potentially is research that we can, you know, delve into further in a few years, and it's exciting. So there's lots of opportunity there to deliver evidence-based messages whilst you're doing a recipe demo. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making some almond butter energy bites. Now, this is a super simple recipe. Anyone can do it. And I'm gonna talk you through the ingredients we've got. So we have got, let's start with cranberries. 70 grams of cranberries. We've got our almond butter here. Now, almond butter 
is basically condensed nutrition on a whole. So lots and lots of almonds ground down and this one doesn't have any additional oil. So no palm oil, nothing like that in there. I'm using 130 grams of that, four and a half tablespoons of honey, or you can use maple syrup. So if you're a plant-based eater, vegan, then that's a very ethical alternative. We have just had Easter guys. So chocolate chips was the actual recipe here. So around our three tablespoons, but I've used leftover Easter eggs because waste not, more than not. Got lots of those chopped here. I have also got 120 grams of rolled oats. I've pre-measured that one out and our vanilla essence, a tablespoon of that, and the key hero ingredient, how could I forget, we have our almonds. We have 56 grams of chopped almonds there, which are of course a wonderful source of plant-based protein, uh, fiber as well. So this is actually a very all-round nutritious, energy, fantastic snack, which you can take anywhere with you. Let's get started. So one bowl, and we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. So if you add your 120 grams of oats, if you're doing this um, as I do this along here, you will um, probably be much better than I at making sure it looks all perfectly separated. Then we're going to add our cranberries, so 70 grams. I've got a weighing scales here. These are really good, these electric scales, if anyone wants something that's super easy to check at home. So if you just pop your scales on the counter, put the bowl on, so I've already done the oats, and I'm just gonna triple check that I've got 70 grams of cranberries there. Yep, perfect. A little bit over, but I love my cranberries. Um, okay, and then we're gonna add our almonds. So the best ingredient there. So we are adding our 56 grams of almonds. I bought the almonds and I chopped them with a knife here, but if you want, you can already buy chopped almonds or you could roast them first perhaps to add a bit of flavor. Now, as I mix these, just to explain, I think um, a lot of people don't realize the things almonds are, are linked to. They know that there's some healthy fats there as well. But when it comes to skin health, there's some more new emerging research. It's really fascinating. So one study on postmenopausal uh, women found out or discovered rather that wrinkle severity was reduced. So an overall appearance of skin evenness improved, skin pigmentation. So, so we have some interesting research that almonds could be beneficial for our skin. I mean, who'd have thought? <laughs> very, very um, interesting area there. So let's add our, I've got honey here, but like I said, maple syrup is good as well. We can have four and a half tablespoons of honey there. So one and two and number three. Now these are no bake. And also why not get creative if you've got anything left over at home as well? Any spices you want to put in, some cinnamon, perhaps it's not just cranberries. If you're not a cranberry fan, you can get some raisins in there as well. Why not? So that's our wet ingredient there, number one. Now we need to add our nut butter as well. So I'm actually gonna leave the spoon because honey gets really sticky on the spoon in there to do the mixing in a minute. I'm gonna get a clean one out and add our 130 grams of our nut butter. So 130 grams, scales coming back out. There we go. Okay, so all that goodness, that plant-based protein, mm, that plant fiber, all going into our energy bites. And this is also a no-bake recipe, so, so much easier. <laughs> just pop it all in the fridge and just leave it for a little bit. So that's our 130 grams there. The spoon gets discarded then. I'll add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm such a fan of all things vanilla and that goes in there. And the chocolate eggs. <laughs> now um, it's three tablespoons of chocolate. I'm just going for it because I love chocolate chips. And I had my leftover chocolate eggs. And as you know, and I said earlier, waste not, want not. And a little bit of chocolate goes a long way. So let's put that in there. And let me just show you, show the camera. Got a whole mix in there mix that up now including dried fruit is also a really wonderful way of getting some condensed energy and this is something perhaps in the nutrition clinic the nutrition clinic that I would provide for clients for on-the-go snacks I think as we return out of lockdown as well we're really interested in making sure that people still remain um, excited by their cooking and 
get organized. I think we all realized what a incredibly fast paced life we lived before and a life of convenience as well, which was um, yeah, grabbing what we could on the go. But if we get organized, then we can get this powerhouse of nutrients and soluble fiber, of course, as well from the oats there. So these are rolled oats, which are very, very beneficial for the digestion. In fact, this is one big gut loving snack that you guys can have on the go. But this is something that we would recommend our clients make in advance. So once you've mixed it in the bowl thoroughly, you will roll it into balls. So like so, and then pop it on a plate and you can put it in the fridge for 20 minutes to maybe half an hour. So as you can see there, I'm squashing that in nicely. And I'll put those in the fridge. And just like any professional, I move this one to one side, give my hands a little rinse in the tap. And we do a Blue Peter style. This is what I made earlier. So over to the fridge, get out the plate. Ta -da! <laughs> this is one I made earlier. Mm. So good. The texture's perfect when they're cold. The honey really helps bind and the almond butter. Of course, we discussed the nutrition, remember protein, fiber, some fascinating research as well about wrinkles being reduced, which I think we're all up for that. And then this serves about 10 balls, I would say. So it makes 10 balls, but of course, if you, if you don't want to and you don't have time, just get 30 grams of almonds, which is the perfect snack. And you can have that any time of day, really, which contributes towards a healthy, balanced diet. So I'm going to sit now in my kitchen, enjoy a rare moment of peace and quiet, enjoy my energy bites and say happy cooking. I'm a big fan of making sure everything is perfectly portioned out. I've got my equipment ready. My lighting is good. And there is no point in doing a video. And I push back a lot on, on my platform, the retrition platforms, the social channels, if I can't deliver content that I think is going to be helpful and look good. Um, nobody wants to see overhead lighting in a dark kitchen that gives you huge bags under your eyes and you can't really see the products that you're filming and the food that you're using. So investing in lighting, especially in the UK, we have horrendous weather. I mean, right now I'm recording this webinar for you all, it's hailing and it's May. So you, we've really got to think about getting a softbox or a reflector, um, just getting something in that can replicate natural light when we don't get it throughout the year. And a tripod is essential. Um, I, I, I've tried it. I've been there, everyone. I've tried to prop my phone up on a candle on a pile of books and something always goes wrong. I think the security of having your phone steady so it's not wobbly, creating poor visuals is incredibly important. And it gives me a hands-free approach. It means I'm way more relaxed. I can talk about the nutrition in the food. I can point towards the food. I can pick it up. I can hold it towards the camera. And that can really make a difference. So the key thing, especially using your phone, so I've been using the word camera, but I should emphasize the fact that mobile phones these days have wonderful cameras inbuilt. Um, I did invest in a Canon camera thinking um, it was what I needed. And I ended up resorting back to my mobile phone uh, when I'm doing uh, content creation as a nutritionist and because it's brilliant. You don't need any more than that. It's so much easier to edit. So the most important thing is definitely to turn off any notifications because they do get in the way. WhatsApp notifications on your laptop, making sure that you've turned your phone off, the do not disturb sign, because if someone calls you, it is going to pause the entire presentation that you've been working on in the video and it's so distracting. So make sure everyone can hear you, ask those questions of course when you're doing it and make sure that you have got the facilities to edit things. So some of my favorites, um, we've got some links here on the presentation for you. Uh, Snapseed, we've got Lightleap and Retouch. These are my favorite apps for editing because they're so simple. As I said earlier, I am not a professional um, editor or have any skills whatsoever in terms of technology when it comes to that. <laughs> I like speaking 
And the downside of the job was that I need to edit pictures, but this makes it easy for me. And it's lovely, like when you've got a bowl of almonds, for instance, you maybe want to brighten up the beautiful texture or show that on the texture on the skin there. You can um, sharpen the image and add a bit more um, texture to it using these apps. So have a play around with those. They're key ones I'd recommend um, downloading. Oh, and Retouch is brilliant if you want to get rid of perhaps an almond that's been knocked a little mm -hmm. bit and you just want to cover over that or remove an extra sprig of um, rosemary or thyme you may have put in an image. So ingredients, obviously make sure things you're cooking are relatable. You can get them at the local shops. Um, whenever you do things, make them consistent. And if you haven't got much time, make sure, like I said earlier, you measure them out in advance. There is nothing worse. I mean, I've done some demos before, live demos on stage with a live audience where I've cut my thumb, cutting an avocado, something so simple, but it happens because I'm talking to a crowd, I'm not looking down at my hands properly, and accidents happen. So I would highly recommend <laughs> pre-chopping anything that's really, um, or anything that's going to be distracting to you, knife work maybe. I think... Things that involve your hands, maybe in a bowl or mixing, I wouldn't worry too much, but safety first and all of that. Um, and try and pick things, of course, with a lot of color and make sure the captions that you're putting on the video are really relevant and it's consistent. One thing about if we use Instagram as a good example, Instagram is a platform where you have got a theme on your page. My theme is color. I'm all about eating a rainbow, keeping it bright, but you've got other accounts that are very aesthetically, um, almost like an interior designer. You, you would have um, maybe a pale blue and white theme throughout the entire feed, or all the font is one type of font on every single image that you see. So be consistent because your audience will know that's you when you're posting new videos. Now we get into the kind of nitty gritty, the things that I do think you really need to be aware of, and that's making sure that the time's right, that you are targeting the video to the social media platform that you're using. Um, you know, short videos are more popular on Instagram and TikTok. They are quick. They're over very, very quickly. So your shots need to be snappy. You don't need to worry about zooming in for a very slow pace and you can speed things up and slow them down and then i guess youtube again you don't want it to be too long but you don't want it to be too short it has to hold the audience and instagram tvs again i think this has a cut off time anyway with the length of things that you can do on it off the top of my head i think it's 20 minutes it may have gone up since um i last an instagram tv but really try and, you know, measure those things out in advance, take some breathing space in between, have a chat, but know that you're on a time limit at the same time. Of course, with a live stream, you don't need to worry about that um, or a workshop. You know, you are in control. You are the cook. Um, you are in charge. You get to pick the dialogue that happens. So let's go into doing it. Let's have a look at an example here that I've got, starting with a blank canvas um, and then popping the videos on. So I make sure everything's lit really correctly. I use the softbox. You've got the tripod that can hover over the top to make sure that you're getting the right angle. I think angles are incredibly important. Um, when you are filming anything and as i've written here in the text for you all to read you know you can rest it over a shelf um, or above the work surface someone can hold it for you but i do think tripods are as i said a, a key investment for health professionals that want to do some more media related work and um, have a read carefully at this slide to get more directions for you there with how to set it up and what to do but these are vital bits of equipment that will make your video look slick we've discussed preparation um, but you have to make sure you take the auto lock off your phone and turn it on to airplane mode it, it, you know i've said it before it might seem obvious but even your battery <laughs> You don't want your phone dying halfway through and you can lose all the content that you've just created. You can save things as you go to your camera roll, but it's very difficult because you need to be um, you know, slotting slides in one after the other. So make sure you are as organized as you possibly can and think ahead. I often think, how do I want this butternut squash, for instance, to be cut? Do I want to hover my hand over it and move it away and then it appears as little chunks? 
or do I want to show the knife cutting into the squash and then cutting in fingers? Really think about how you want to do that. And I would suggest having a look at some videos I've done on the nutrition page if you want to get some inspiration with when to speed up your recipe, when to slow it down. And then this is a bowl that I've done for uh, the California, um, California Animal Board here. And it was a step-by-step -step process, as you can see, to fill the, um, the Buddha bowl overall. And the almonds are the key piece, so I needed them to stand out, which actually are quite difficult in a bowl of really colourful food. So instead of chopping or scattering around, I put them in a um, centred point inside of the bowl, so it's very easy to see the pile of almonds there. Um, and you can get a few different shots, of course, of the end product, and that can be used to put over the top of the video. Either maybe you eating with a fork, or I like to zoom in. But you've got to remember that once you start, you can't move things around because it won't work. So it has to stay. Maybe put a marker underneath the bowl if, if you've moved the bowl so you know where to put it back in, in the correct place afterwards. And then the cover. The cover is definitely one of my preferred bits to do. It's kind of like a sigh of relief. I've got the content. What cover can I do that's going to make it really um, eye-grabbing for everyone? So it, remember, of course, it needs to be shot in the 16-9 ratio. So on your mobile phone here, um, I've put some rough, you can see my arrows on the screen, rough diagrams, because I had to um, Google this before figuring out how to change the dimensions of my phone. I didn't know. So I hope that's really helpful for you there because you need it to show up on the grid in the right dimension or it looks really out of place. And then you can see I've, I've um, written the title above the bowl. I do experiment sometimes with putting writing below the bowl, but having looked at what fits on the screen, the title seems to nearly always go above and the writing for the instructions will go below for me. But you have a play around, see what you think will work for you. Now, the step-by-step -step guide, I hope, is really helpful, but of course, you know, it's going to take a few trials and error, uh, trial and error for you to get used to, and it might be easier to edit it on a bigger screen because using mobiles, it can be very hard if you've got clumsy fingers or just pressing these tiny buttons to edit things, and it's meticulous. Sometimes you're talking half a second where you're editing clips to make it fit into 30 seconds overall. It's a hell of a lot of work for 30 seconds at the end of the day, but totally, totally worth it. Um, and I would say have a little practice, but do use iMovie if you want to pop it onto a bigger screen, edit it, then you can airdrop it if you're on an iPhone or put it back onto your phone and then upload it because you can upload clips that already exist on your phone to your Instagram Reels. And then it's the posting. It's the magic. And this is, again, one of my favorite um, parts. So the nutritionist to me, I actually used to be a singer, soprano, before um, a professional career as a soprano, before a nutritionist. And I've got to say, my music taste is not up to date. And I'm probably not the only one. I will stick on an old record. Records, I'll stick on an old tune rather than a new one. So I use TikTok to pick what's trending. I go to what's trending. It's actually called what's hot right now. Um, and I'll pick one of the top tunes that's on there. And I will use that music. And I will search for it on Instagram, save it off a previous reel, and then I can upload it to my own. And then that way, I know that it will get more views because it's a popular song rather than what I would rather play because I'm stuck back in the 90s or I'd rather classical music. It's probably not going to go down as well as the up-to-date versions that you will um, be getting from TikTok. So to boost your toast, toast? Boost your posts. Um, you will need to make sure that everything is very clear. Um, we don't want waffle. There's no point writing endless long sentences. You don't have the word count for starters. Um, it needs to be eye-catching, so I always use um, the images and you can insert those on Instagram already. You've got all those options to insert, you know, smiley faces or ticks or whatever you want. Bullet points to make it very clear, the method. Um, always use the hashtags that will work for you within the text. I have a few problems with this because I I created the hashtag a very long time ago, Myth Busting Monday, or at the time I was using it and no one else was, and it wasn't coming up, it was just me. But it suddenly started to become so widely used that I decided to change mine to Myth Busting with Re, and to try and make sure that my audience could just find my posts in one place and follow one hashtag. 
you can follow hashtags, remember, and you can look for things and you can see by the side of the hashtag how many people are currently following that hashtag. So there's a good few tips. Do have a good read of all the points here on the slide because it would definitely help you mm -hmm. with getting your post to perform to perform more and then sharing it to the blog. Why not take some stills? You've just spent all this time making a recipe. This, this can take me a couple of hours. I mean, I'm, I'm faster now, but it did used to take a hell of a lot of time when you start out. And then you can use it and upload it to your blog. And then you've got even more space to put some wonderful nutritional nuggets in. You can add some referencing if you want at the bottom of your blog. You can hyperlink to other pages on your website or your social media platforms. And just try and boost people to go into as many different sites as they can. So here's some helpful resources um, from the Almond Board, and I really hope that you do find all of this really useful because it is, it's daunting. I've been there. I didn't think I could do it. Um, I always just assumed that this sort of thing was for the pros and I'd have to pay someone to do it all the time, but you can do this yourself. It is totally possible. It does take practice. And once you've achieved it and you've had a read through these helpful resources, you will feel like you've achieved something, I promise. So I guess it's the future generation of health professionals now trying to get messages across in a different um, space, a different format, which is so important. So a big thank you from me and um, California Almonds, and we really hope that you have found all the information that we've given you today useful and that you feel confident that you can go away now and create some wonderful, wonderful recipes and get some incredible nutritional nuggets out there for everybody. Have a look through the slides, um, have a good read, and good luck making your videos.